Okay, everybody. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, thanks so much for coming here on this busy Friday. We have so many events going on, but I wanted to uh, introduce the, our guest speaker for today, uh, Renato Balbin from IPEA, which is the Brazilian government think tank. Uh, but before that, let me thank. Uh, Carla Mohamed and Sonia Roncador at the Brazil Center for co-sponsoring this event together with the CRP uh, Planning Forum that happens every other Friday. And today we got this Friday available because all the faculty is out at the ACSP conference. Mm -hmm. So we are filling in, but I'm happy to fill in and bring this conversation about mobility in Brazil for us here today. So. Uh, I'm Fernando Lara. I teach here at the School of Architecture a number of things. Uh, I'm probably the one faculty member that is in most programs, uh, urban design, architecture, planning, and preservation. And today I have the pleasure to uh, host and present to you Renato Balbin. Uh, Brazil has this institute called IPEA, uh, which is part of the executive branch of government, is part of the presidency, uh, depending on which president, if it's an elected one, or if it's, uh, uh, I don't have a word to describe Tamar in English. <laughs> if it's an uh, uh, illegal one, or uh, the one that just gave a coup, depending on that, they shift the pay uh, from one part of the government to another, and the, the, the position of IPEA inside the government shifts depending on the legality of the government. But what we know for sure is that IPEA have some of the very best brains in Brazil. It is unbelievable how they managed to put in one institute uh, people who have the most public policy talent to do research to do public policy evaluation, and to do uh, governmental proposals in all the areas that the government is involved in, from urbanism to economics to welfare to retirement to education. IPEA has a group. How, how many 500. people? 500 people. Yeah. PhD. 500 PhD people together trying to think uh, what's going on in Brazil. Uh, I'm very fortunate that I have collaborated with a number of them. And uh, I visited IPEA in 2014, I think. And from that visit came the invitation to participate with a chapter in this book. So with that said, I will let Renato Balbin explain about the book and what he does at IPEA and what he's not really doing right now at IPEA because things are really bad there. And, but we can celebrate the book and celebrate the ideas that we try to bring together in the book. Thank you so much, Renato, for coming. Thank you. So, thank you, Fernando Lara, for the invitation. Hello, everybody. Um, first, uh, I'm apologize. My, my English is so-so, but I will try to speak in English anyway. Uh, I would like also to, to say thank you to the Institute of Latin American Studies here. I'm super impressive with uh, this institute. It's so you know, big and uh, important institute here in Austin. Um, so talking about the IPEA, IPEA it's a it's a very nice place to, to work because we are together, 500 PhDs working, thinking about uh, policies in Brazil and also in Latin America. That's today, it's, nowadays it's a very difficult uh, moment in Brazil, as you, you probably know. Uh, so that's one of the reasons that I'm still working now at UCI, uh, University of California, Irvine, as a researcher there, uh, doing a kind of, um, uh, how 
what can I say? Extended sabbatical. Uh, extended sabbatical, sabbatical time, <laughs> because in a political way, it's better to be there now than in Brazil, because as Fernando told you guys, uh, we work as a advisors for the president or the presidency in Brazil. And um, yeah, yeah, it's difficult to be an advisor in this political situation. Anyway, uh, today we are here to, to celebrate and uh, to talk about this, uh, this book. Uh, the book, uh, just to see how my time. So the book, uh, contain uh, 13 articles with 26 authors and uh, we made this book from IPEA and ETDP. ETDP it's an institute for transportation and development uh, policies. It's a it's an American institute, but they are <coughs> they have also um, offices in Mexico, in Brazil, China, and other parts of the world. Uh, so the book is uh, published in English and also in Portuguese. You you can have access by the web page, the pair web page. Uh, and uh, it's important to say this book was conceptualized in 2003 uh, when we have uh, huge protests, street protests in, in Brazil about talking about mobility, daily mobility or everyday mobility. Uh, what's happening in Brazil in this moment to simplify the, the things, uh, the social mobility in Brazil uh, that more than 30 million Brazilians experience in the in the recent 10, 12, 15 years, you know, changed a lot other kinds of mobility. And the cities, uh, and, and at the time, it was clear that the daily mobility is not only something about transportation. That was probably what was happened uh, in Brazil in 2003. People was at the street fighting for daily mobility or quality in the transportation system. But these people, the most part of these people, they experienced uh, uh, social mobility in the last few years. And <clears throat> they were talking also about other kinds of, of mobilities. So this book, uh, the motivation of this book, it was the social manifestations, as I told you, and we had the idea to produce a book that was, at the same time, uh, an innovative book at the way of approaching to the daily mobility. Uh, that, what that means, uh, we uh, tried to work in, uh, with mobility as a major uh, key to analyze the urban life. Uh, and it, it's very important in this book recover the importance of the, the, the relationship, the life of relationship to explain the urban lifestyle, but also to explain the production of, of the, 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 the urbanization, the production, production of the urban space. Also, uh, we wanted to overcome this dichotomy between transportation and urbanism. That's something that people work for that, <laughs> we understand, but how we could also uh, give some uh, ideas or new methodologies or theories to, to really uh, overcome this, this dichotomy. So to achieve this goal, the idea of the book it was to invite people to, to write the book, make an effort to think mobility as a system of mobility, not just one mobility. You know? So, um, <clears throat> that is to say, uh, the chapters here presented treat mobility in this very particular way. It is probably better addressed mobility here, addressed mobility here uh, in the plural, mobilities. But we talk about mobility. 
So the uh, 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 the idea, the issue of everyday mobility is usually addressed, analyzing uh, together the transportation system and uh, uh, the characteristics of of the urban uh, urban place. Uh, but in my opinion, nowadays this this approach is is uh, it's a classical approach. We know that even uh, uh, even if many people don't uh, do it yet, we know we need to to work uh, with transportation and the configuration of urban urban space together. But here we treat to supplant or overlap this idea, proposing new methodologies that bring it to the, together also the historical, the social, the symbolical, and the political pacts er, and impacts that define the social and spatial structures of mobility. So mobility here is always treated as a political issue. It's not just transportation, it's not just urban configuration, but it's also a political issue. So to accomplish this effort, a new theoretical path was needed, and uh, this is uh, the main goal to the chapter one that I wrote, and also the chapter two that give some contributions uh, in a very particular particular uh, theoretical way. Uh, in this first uh, chapter, mobility uh, as system approach, uh, <coughs> we talk about first. Uh, that we have some essential uh, uh, types of social mobility that occur beside uh, the physical displacement. Uh, for example, the social mobility, that means a shift of social states, status that we, we know, uh, we very, we, everyone knows uh, about that, but also other kind of essential mobility that uh, the professional mobility uh, is not just to change the job, but to change the occupation that changes also all kinds of lens that we have to, 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 to see, uh, to interpret the reality, and also how people look at us. So, the professional mobility as an essential mobility, it's a very important mobility because change our symbolical uh, status at the society and probably also the social status at the society, but change how the lens that we have to look uh, to the reality. And also we can talk about the, 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 the really essential mobility, that condition, that human condition, that uh, when we talk about all the kinds of uh, movements with how displacement, for example, uh, the lifetime, it's a, it's, a, it's a movement. We change our life when we are a kid, a young, uh, or uh, old people, or aged people, you know, but also the fashion. The fashion is a kind of movement, and uh, that that means a lot. The way that we uh, have our relationship with society. So, all these four kinds or types of social mobilities are intrinsically uh, related to that we may call the spatial, spatial or geographic mobilities. So. Second, we, we must to, to consider the temporal and the spatial dimensions of the movements. And uh, so I talk about four essential or social types of mobility. We, and also we have these kinds of geographical mobility. If we consider the temporal uh, 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 dimension of geographic mobilities, we can talk about <clears throat> these uh, two types of, of movements, the movement that uh, uh, the, we have the intention to, 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 to return 
shortly and the movement that we don't have the intention to return uh, to the point that we, we, we start the movement or we leave it. And also, we have more two uh, d dimensions, the spatial dimen the dimensions of the geographical mobility, that uh, uh, it's uh, the, when we, we keep the, the location of life or when we change the, <clears throat> the location of life. So that uh, give us more four types of mobility. If you, we see the time and the space, uh, we have the everyday mobility or the daily mobility. We keep the place and we come back in the same day, you know, or shortly. Or the residential mobility, we don't keep the place, but we keep the time. And the travel and tourism, our kind of travel and tourism, and also the migrations. But, so we have now eight types of mobility and uh, uh, at least uh, so at least we have eight types of mobility but also uh, many other authors they talk also about more two types of mobility that can the uh, uh, and the special uh, the geographical mobility uh, the sedent sedentarism mm -hmm as a kind of uh, uh, behavior, of mobility behavior, and also the nomadism. So these extreme kinds of geographical mobility. So we have, a, so we can count 10 types of, of mobility. And the idea is these kinds of mobility, they work together. So the most important is to see, and uh, we try to present this book, that each type of mobility is strong connected to the others, leading to the idea uh, uh, that the flows and vectors of different types of mobilities are not standard alone. Uh, they establish causalities, complementar complementarities, and also Sometimes we have substitution when we have a kind of mobility that bring something as a, a social improvement. We substitute. We can have substitution of other types of mobility. So anyway, uh, all kinds of mobility we need also to to, to remember. Uh, it's a physical mobility or not physical mobility. Uh, they they have also a point of origin of the mobility, mm -hmm. and that place can be a physical place or a social and symbolical uh, uh, place. And uh, when we have one kind of mo mobility, it's not just because we change the other probabilities or possibilities to the other kinds of mobility, but, but we, we change, change also the place that we start the mobility. mobility. So, so we, we need to consider, consider and that's, that's the effort, effort of this book, to, to consider, consider all these factors together. And to write the book, uh, we had to, to, to the, the edition of the book, uh, for the authors and also for us, the editors, we have uh, two big challenges. Uh, the big one, it was to tr translate this com complex system of thoughts and uh, 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 of thoughts in new methodologies, uh, but new methodologies also showing a uh, uh, public policies case. So. Uh, and that, that uh, bring the other uh, 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 challenge of this book, and that, that was the, the, the huge challenge of this book. Oh, uh, it was to, to write something uh, showing a new theory, or a new theory, or a theory, new methodologies, case, and in a, in a, in a using a, a language that could be access, ac accessible for all people concerned with this, this subject. Mm -hmm. 
not only at the academia, not only uh, uh, to the policy makers, but also to people at the ground, in the social movements, and uh, you know, to do something that could uh, 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 open uh, a new uh, discussion about the, the subject. So that was uh, something that we 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 had this. Um, this idea in 2003, because we needed to talk with people uh, fighting at the street about mobility and show uh, how we could help to, to make uh, a better uh, public policies, uh, uh, changing the, the transportation system, but probably not change it the, the, the everyday mobility or the daily mobility, you know, talking about housing policy or talking about uh, symbolical things, for example. So, now, uh, and I'm talking a lot, I'm talking 20 minutes and probably I have more training, it's okay, for 15? 15, okay. <coughs> okay. So, uh, just to have this idea, this theoretical idea, and after I will pass to, to, to show some examples that how we, we work at, with all these ideas together, uh, it's important to say that mobility, and we know that mobility is not just uh, a simple, nicer trip between places in the city, you know. For example, at the, the, the school, the social school in Chicago in 1925, they, they, they associate uh, uh, mobility uh, with this ability of in individuals or groups to access the city. The, the, the act of moving and being in movement uh, is uh, it's a, they have a, many dimensions of these movements, but it's also closely related to the sub subjective uh, uh, expressions of urban reproductions uh, of social relationships. We need to. I think we need to, 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 to remember that any time, uh, every moment that we are in a, in a movement, a physical movement, or, or a, a not physical movement, we are changing ourselves, but we are changing also uh, the space. We are put, that's, the, that's the production of the space. When we talk about, for example, right to the city, and uh, in the last week, we had the, the, the Habitat Tree, the conference, the, 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 the United Nations conference uh, about urban develop, development. When we talk about right to the city, it's not just talk about the access to the city, to the physical city, to the, the, the infrastructure uh, or place. But the most important is that is this uh, the, the, the right to be in movement at the city and to be in the interaction at the city, and that's the most important thing when we 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 think about uh, a city uh, because the the movement is the is the is the soul of a city. The movement uh, is also a product and a producer of power in a city. And nowadays we know this very, very, very well. We search for movement, physical movement, or social movement, or symbolic movement, all the time. And we judge the people and we put people in different boxes. Thinking about, about all these kind, kind of movements. So, <coughs> that's 
is one of the, 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 the ideas of this book. And uh, just to finish this first time about uh, the, the more the theoretical ideas of the book, I would like to, to show or to read for you people these two uh, statements uh, wrote by Max Torre, Maximilian Sorry. Uh, it's a French geographer, geographer working in the 1950 something. And uh, he wrote a lot about the urban lifestyle or the, the genre, genre de vie. So that's important to say, participating in life of, of extensive relationships create the, the atmosphere, atmosphere uh, uh, of civility and ur urbanity, urbanity. That's the whole idea. A city is nothing more than movements. We work a lot, and this book try to show in a different way, we work a lot with the, the physical place and the, 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 the residation, residation, residation areas in the city or the functions of the city. But that's not the city. That's just the configuration of the city. To, um, to, 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 uh, the life of the city, or the urban life, is the movement. Oh. So, talking again about right to the city, and he Lefebvre, who wrote right to the city, you know, he wrote also something about that. He told in 1969 that the movement has become more and more important in the city than the place of the residence. And how this idea of the right to the city is idea uh, close to the, the movement of people. So now just to show to you guys some uh, ideas of the book, uh, I will talk about some chapters. The, the most part of the chapters uh, have this uh, relation, uh, the, how the chapter make relations with different kinds of uh, mobilities, but the most important relations is about the residential, social, symbolic, and work or professional mobilities. So while you talk about some chapters, I'm not, I'm not talking about the chapter wrote about Fernando Lara because he's here to, to defend himself, I don't need to do it. So uh, first, just to show a little bit, uh, that's the chapter three, it's a chapter talking about urban segregation and exclusion. Here we can see uh, in this chapter, they have uh, many data about Sao Paulo, but uh, it's an uh, invitation to read this chapter because uh, the data uh, uh, talk about Sao Paulo, but the whole idea about segregation and mobility can be used also to explain other cities. Uh, for example, here, uh, in this graph, if, if we take the space consumption uh, by social class, the space uh, consumption in a city by social class, we see a striking difference in the use and appropriation of the space related to the income. So uh, here is income, here the space consumption, the linear space consumption, and here is a, the dynamic space consumption. That means we have the linear, if we multiply for the, the, the area that people use uh, in a different, in the different mode, the transportation modes, we have this dynamic uh, 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 consumption of space. So the poor people, uh, consum the consumption of the space is completely, it's 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 a, it's a shortly consumption. That's the 
the richer people and we can see uh, the rate here is probably 4 but here it's 11 why because these people also they they they, they the movement is is uh, so it's a, the linear movement it's bigger in the seat but also these people use cars you know? the most part of these people they are using the public transportation or walking but also if we talk uh, so that what the author they call the metabolism uh, by transportation mode uh, we can see uh, how the mobility can be f we can we can think mobility as a, a, a field in this book. It's it's a, it's a field. It's a it's a it's a the mobility is a power, and uh, this field is in this part at the city. You know? uh, so here we can see how the indiv individual choice. Uh, in this case, individual transportation result in an almost negative impact for all the, co the community. For example, we have here it's no no motor motor motorism transportation, the public transport and the in individual transport transport. You know, uh, so the the individual choice make this this graph, but these negative uh, 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 things, the pollu pollutants and the accidents, it's it's something that it's for all the collective, it's for the all the city, you know, and probably the accidents, the most part of the accidents involve people uh, in the no motorized yeah, transportation, right yeah. Bicycle, 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 yeah, bicycle. yeah. So when we see the 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 two graphic graphics together, uh, the two information information together, it becomes even clear that the greater individual appropriation of the city is directly uh, 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 related to to the income. Uh, while these economies and pollutions are qualitative uh, things, you know? so if we add to this the the relative immobilism of the poorest people, we see how the terms segregation and exclusion gain. Uh, Typical shades of perversity, you know, because we don't, the poor people, they move less, but also they have more how this, uh, this economy, the impact of how these this economies and pollutions is, is worse in, yeah. for this uh, 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 social class. So we are talking about. Uh, political choice, and we are talking about power in the city, how people live better or not in the city. So this uh, now, how how long do I have more? Five. Okay. So I think it's important to show here uh, at this the chapter eight we ha we uh, we make uh, uh, um, uh, research in two different big favelas in Rio de Janeiro, but big favelas. One of them, the Complexo do Alemão, it's a city with more than 100,000 people living there inside. So, 
uh, and we wrote a chapter in a un unusual view about right to the city connecting to the right to, to mobility. And what was very important, to be shortly here, what was very important, important in this research, it was to see uh, the, 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 the different expectations uh, from people at the ground about physical mobility and symbolic mobility. So at that point, there, uh, and we use uh, for this research, we use uh, the focal groups to, to, and also quantitative research uh, to see what was happening at this moment in this, in this favela, because we, uh, the federal government had a, 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 um, a program to, to improve or to make the re-urbanization of this favela. And the, the, the most important thing it was to build a cable car at the favela. So we talk a lot with, in this group, so, uh, focus group about the cable car. And uh, we, we uh, um, uh, at the end, we make this, these seven different categories about the, the, the answers about the cable car. But the most important here is to show something that people, you know, uh, uh, the words of people at these, these, these uh, focal groups. So, it's it's interesting if we see it's just for show. It's just about the cable car. It's just for show. It's just for you to ride on sometimes, which is nice, but it's it's nothing that's you know not necessary. Or you know people uh, the, the 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 political choice to have a cable car there. It was a political choice at the federal government. But people concerned about, you know, a bus, a van, a motorbike, you know, you are in a favela and the, the, you know, downhill, uphill, downhill, uphill, you know, <laughs> a motorcycle is amazing, you know, that's something that I need there. So, but also it's important, there, also with the cable car, the symbolic boundaries inside the favela it was put down you know completely so people living there for many years with the, uh, a family here and the family in the other hill you know the the only way to see your your parent it was to go at the city you know because inside the favela it was impossible to cross the symbolic boundaries the violence the gangs, all these things. You know? and, and with this, this cable car, car the symbolic boundary is just pfft, and, and the whole mobility of the, the, this, this area changed. But also, and that's, uh, I think it's very important, you know, how the mobility, they are connected. And uh, it's so, we, we can talk hours in a theoretical way, but People at the ground, people know that. For example, there, I believe the cable car is going to pump up tourists. People are going to want to open a, a little store here. We can have a market. You know, we can improve the social mobility. That change all the things that's with a cable car. That's with a physical uh, transportation system. So that's what we are talking about, these kind of connections. And probably, and I know that, and probably Fernando Lara also he knows because he, he worked a lot with uh, uh, favelas in Brazil and other parts of the world, you know, sometimes the most important thing is not to have the, this new bus in this transportation system, is to have a sidewalk because I, people need to walk in the uh, in mud, in mud and, pavement. 
and clean the, 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 the feet before put the shoes to go to work. That's so symbolical. Huh? Anyway, uh, what I you choose to to show now because I'm talking a lot. And, uh, so at the chapter eleven, uh, the authors worked with uh, the residential mobility and the job mobility. It's uh, when we uh, in Brazil we have this this situation that we have a lot of uh, uh, un unregistered workers and the registered workers, you know, and uh, we can see how the, 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 this professional mobility impacts, you know, the distance and time here, you know, of the daily mobility, the commute, 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 commute you know. Just to show the relations, uh, the kinds of relations that we built in this, this book. But also, when the here is a regression, find the, the, the travel time uh, to the unregistered work and the housing status. Uh, the vulnerability didn't show a lot of difference, but the housing status, and that's a very important thing to talk, they show a, 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 a big variation of time in the in the in the commute uh, in the daily mobility commute, commute. and that's very important because what we are talking here we are talking about uh, home home owners and people rent house when you rent a house your uh, time your your time uh, Expand at the, the transportation system, you know, uh, it's, it's less than we are a home homeowner. Thank you very much. <laughs> that's obvious. Okay, that's obvious. We know that, and we, we I started to talk about that. We know uh, we need to work. With the transportation system, the daily mobility, and uh, the urban configuration and urbanization together, we know that it's obvious. Okay, it's obvious, but we know also to show that it's obvious, you know. And sometimes, you know, just we we need just to to change the 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 the, the housing policy. You know, to make improvement at the, the, the mobility system, or we need to flexibilize that, to have more to make more flexible the 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 the, the job uh, time in the city to, to change the things. So, and I will stop a little bit in a little bit, uh, just showing. Uh, that the the areas in Rio de Janeiro when we, where people made this this research and they found also the, the, this uh, is a uh, the chapter twelve it's very very interesting chapter and uh, I invite I invite you to to take a look because they they build a new tool a methodological tool. To show uh, uh, and uh, to evaluate uh, the localization of housing policies in cities, but they work with the the, the transit transport oriented uh, develop de develop, but also with this other two together, the urban insertion insertion uh, 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 tool. Uh, and just to to finish. I use it, this this picture in other book, but I think it's important to say to 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 show this picture at the end of this presentation because it's and I, uh, the other book it was about 
uh, geopolitics of city. And <laughs> I use this, this, this picture of uh, talking about uh, Sproul. Uh, <clears throat> I think that it's important to say that it's a, it's a perverse blend uh, of physical distance and social gaps that build, build up into social and spatial uh, inequality. And uh, it's, uh, it's uh, very important to remember that uh, mobility in a city, it's a political choice. Because we are talking about power in the city. Who have the power to access the city, and not only to access the city, but to produce the lifestyle of the city? When we talk about uh, uh, the right to the city, we need to remember that the most part of people living in a city here or in Brazil, they are not live, making the lifestyle of this city. Because sometimes they are just living to work, to home, to work, to home. And at the numbers, at the data about mobility, we can see they are moving at the city. But in, we need to, to ask about this movement. What this movement, movement can uh, signify, the, 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 the meaning of the movement. So we need to ask about, we, we need to make questions uh, get other types of mobility to analyze just this geographical or spatial mobility. So, thanks a lot for the invitation, and uh, I invite you to, to read the book. <laughs> so, I think we have a few minutes for questions. Uh, we have eight copies of the book here for those who want, and we have a few minutes for questions to Renato. Before people have to go to class. Yes. Uh, I have a question that's sort of an aside, but it gets at one of the points there. You use the word accident, and there's a movement in the US to the crash, non accident movement, and they use the word crash instead mm -hmm. of accident, because the accident um, is passive oh. voice, and crash, and most of the time, there's a cause, someone mm -hmm. did something. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, I, and one of the weird dynamics is in Texas is that there's a problem translating that to Spanish, <laughs> and that no one's figured out how to make those two words make sense in Spanish. But so in Portuguese, uh, maybe it's also a problem. I was just wondering what you think about that. <laughs> well, we have the word. We can use the word collision. 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 Yeah. Uh, collision so, isn't about two. Yeah. Two Machine. Then yeah, then you have to use atropelamiento. You have to use the, you have to give it the proper name. I mean, I think you have a point. It's it's those are not accidents. Right? Those things happen for a cause. And I guess your point most is often for a human cause. Yeah. Uh, your point that the accidents are people driving cars, but happen to people walking mm -hmm. biking. Yes, yes. And uh, in the in the Brazilian cities. Uh, the, the, it's, uh, the most part of people uh, that die in an accident, they are uh, run over by cars. Yeah. yeah. So it's not an accident. <laughs> there is a connection also with other types of uh, accidents or violence, you know? I mean, the last. Um, capable you are of having your own car and individual mm -hmm. mobilities in the city, the more exposed and vulnerable I mean, you know, think your a, bodies. The think, body about, think about the car as a 2,000 pound, 3,000 pound shield of metal that you have around you, right? It's a you, when you drive, you have all that shield. Um, probably, uh, I, I had some research about that 
that I made more than 10 years ago that showing in Sao Paulo city and showing uh, at, this, at the territory of the city, we have a, a, a high correlation in areas between the areas then we have uh, the violent accident car crash and the, the, the violence with a gun. So, you know, I, it's so they have a correlation with the virus of the space <laughs> that I can I can talk about. Yeah, you had a question. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, it was it wasn't uh, 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 a very I can, I can I can talk about a methodological approach to do it, but it was much more an effort to do it. But for example, the the, the, the most part of the chapters in this in this book, they they were read before for people at the Complexo do Alemão, this favela in, São Paulo, in Rio de Janeiro, you know, because we worked with these people and in other favelas in, in Rio de Janeiro, and uh, we made a partnership and they, they read uh, uh, the, the chapters, the most part of the chapters of the book, but it was much more an effort with the authors, you know, to make in a, in a language uh, that could uh, access uh, more people and uh, because it's important we think it's important to bring new ideas uh, for example in the municipalities you know for the policy makers to, to, to make things in a different way uh, but it was much more an effort and we still Doing the I, can, I can use your question actually and talk for two minutes about my chapter. <laughs> <laughs> my chapter, I talked a lot about those two guys. The Brazilians know them very well. One is the most famous architect in the Americas of the 20th century, Oscar Niemeyer. The other is Juscelino Kubitschek, who was mayor, then governor, then president in Brazil. And together, they built a lot of modern structures in the country. Uh, and the president, Kubitschek, is also known for being the biggest promoter of automobile-oriented development in Brazil. Automobile industries, automobile-oriented uh, uh, transportation systems, etc. And it's not a coincidence that those things are together, but it's a challenge because you have the scholars who write about public policy and the decisions around industrialization and the auto industry, etc. You have these scholars that write about architecture, myself included, and nobody's in between. Nobody's doing the connection of those two things, the industrial policies, the subsidies, the investments, and the architecture. So there's a challenge there to find a new language to put those two things together in a way that most people would understand. Because if I... If I insulate myself inside the architectural discourse, only my master's students and PhD students will understand, but the majority of the public would not get it. The same for issues of uh, investment, public policy, industrialization, etc., etc. So there's a... Uh, I think it's something that us scholars need to do more, which is to write for broader audiences. Yeah. Back here. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. The, the chart you had that shows different dimensions, um, you know, and so the 
you know, people achieve the same amount of trips but have very different outcomes of like that one and the that one. That one and the one. Uh, yeah. I'm just thinking it'd be interesting to apply this to big planning exercises. So a regional transportation plan for Austin. And we have to, you could uh, you could basically have this graph for today, mm -hmm. and then if you build this light rail line and do these things, what would how would these things what would the outcome of this be? I wonder if anyone you ever tried to do sort of scenarios with this these metrics. You're talking about projecting that into the future. Yeah. So say, if, if you change option, you change the zoning, you change the building code, you change the transportation mode, you you have X. I think I think we can do it pretty well with time, distance, energy, pollutants. We have the tools to do that pretty well. Accidents and collisions are things that are much harder to project into the future, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I, I, I can tell you that we can do the first ones with very high accuracy, uh, especially energy, pollutants, distance, time. Accidents a little, right? You're talking about, if you're talking about self-driving cars, you're talking about other machines that move people around, and uh, yeah. What do you think, Hannah? You, you no, I'm, I'm agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess the point, this would be, for an elected official, this would be very helpful for decision making. If you could go yeah, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, you, you guys are probably familiar with Envision Tomorrow. The software, the playing software that Bob Patterson and others put together. I used it in Brazil to do an analysis of uh, periphery of Sao Paulo. It was a big challenge because a lot of the metrics are very different. But it's a very powerful tool. You aggregate the numbers in a GIS base. You create those libraries of building types and energy consumption, etc. And when you change the zoning, when you change the building code, when you project the change in the building envelope, you have all the results. You have all the results in uh, density, the results in energy, the results in accessibility to whatever, right? Because when you're planning, you're, you're playing God a little bit and you're trying to put the jobs there, trying to put the residences here, etc. And yeah, it's a great tool to, to envision a better future. Uh, Oh, just just to, to talk about the book also, they have four chapters talking about planning and design and this relation about with with the mobilities <laughs> and one one of them it's a yeah an mm -hmm. uh, chapter <laughs> so it's a it's a very important. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for sharing and. and Looking forward to the book, and uh, it's. I'll start distributing the book, otherwise people will not come and get it. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, should I? Should I circulate it or? No, keep it. because oh, we you. don't have books <laughs> for. Uh, okay. Just, just sorry to make a. Uh, parentheses. Uh, with this political situation in Brazil, it was very difficult for us, for example, to just uh, uh, have survive. to survive, <laughs> for example, to have the books. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, but anyways, I, I, it's just more of a comment. Uh, I'm looking forward to the book. And I think that the book is a great tool for people to the hope around this new mobility paradigm that people from transverse of Lancaster in England. Mm, no, uh, not really. Yeah, there is this big crew working on it, and I think it's no, my name it is there, Mexico City, a week ago, and uh, and we've been discussing for a long time. It's it was pretty much around John Murray and Mary Scheller, and John just passed away in March. And uh, and one of the things that we've been discussing for a long time is the, the need to have this theory that comes from, mostly comes from, from the North to dialogue with this empirical mm -hmm. reality of the South. Mm -hmm. To increase not only in terms of empirical data, but in terms of theory itself. Mm -hmm. 
right? Mm. Because there's there's so much being written about nobilities, uh, nobilities in the plural, in terms of power and everything. But then when we come up with this kind of thing, we are talking about inequality, uneven, uh, informal economy, yeah, and so many things that are sometimes difficult for them to. I mean, there's one, one little piece of data that Renato just presented, which is striking. People who are in the informal economy are having less distance and less time spent on transportation. Mm -hmm. That means they burn less carbon. Mm -hmm. So yes. if you want to think about saving the planet and solving climate change, informal economy might be one way to do it. We, I mean, we, have, to, we have to consider those options. Mm -hmm. We can't pretend that everybody should follow the northern model, no. Yeah, sure. but then again, it's, uh, you, need, you need to be on the ground to, mm -hmm. yeah, to, to uh, I don't know, but I published a few years ago a, an article about climate change and mobilities in Pocinha, and that, that was pretty interesting in terms of how people figure out climate change mm -hmm. itself and what they're they willing to, especially in a country that made so much um, this correlation in Brazil about improvement, life improvement, and car ownership. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. So. yeah, but uh, it's, uh, I think we can also talk two things uh, uh, from your your words. First, uh, with uh, the, the 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 economic situation of the north now, mm -hmm. and all this problem that cities mm -hmm. now it's a. Uh, more and more the cities in the north uh, they are living now the same it's not the same problems but the problem of poverty and uh, uh, I think uh, we have also the chance to to start to make a, 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 a the opposite movement you know and uh, to have I more mean, connection think about but and other things just the second thing, it's important to say, when we talk about uh, the un unregist un un unregistered works uh, in Brazil, they burn more, they burn less mm -hmm. uh, 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 carbon, carbon. carbon. okay, uh, but also they have a kind of solidarity mm -hmm. that the the, 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 the the flexibilization policies of jobs in the north of the world mm -hmm. doesn't have you know mm -hmm. in these kind of policies the flexibilization uh, uh, of the, 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 the job mm -hmm. for example the uber it's a flexibilization mm -hmm. you know because you work by yourself mm -hmm. you know <clears throat> this kind of solidarity that we can uh, see uh, at the ground in favelas and uh, people working uh, in this very flexible way, mm -hmm. you know, it's also something that we can more and more share and teach uh, uh, to the world. Let's see what's happened because that's that's important. It's it's a chance. Now we have the world have the chance to communicate more, mm -hmm. and uh, as Milton Santos, uh, Brazilian geographer, very important. Uh, geographer said, uh, the innovation it's it will come, come yes. from 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 the, the, the poverty because mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. they have the, the possibility to to imagine. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys. I think we need to wrap the session. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you.